Hi, this is Bryce Adams of Trimble Forensics. In part two of how to use the momentum tool in Reveal, we're going to discuss adding values and properties to the vehicles for this final solution set. As a reminder, vehicle one, the black vehicle, and vehicle two, the silver vehicle, have already been assigned pre-impact and post-impact angles. At this point, we're ready to assign weights to each vehicle and assign post acceleration factors to each vehicle. First in the specifications box, which probably says generic vehicle for you, you can hit the drop down window and assign the vehicle that you would like to be in that window. What you see here is a result of linking a vehicle spec to a car prior to the momentum being used. If you did not do that, it's okay. Just select this vehicle specs and then go look for the proper year, make, and model and apply that to that particular set. Since we've already linked those vehicle specs, I will find the Acura RSX as vehicle one and go down to vehicle two and repeat that, hitting a drop down box and assigning the Mini Cooper as vehicle two. You can see that the total weights for each vehicle has fallen in based on the forensic auto spec report that I used. After assigning weights, we're going to talk about post impact acceleration zones. We have assigned a 0.66 factor for a drag factor from the area of impact to final rest. It's a defaulted value. So to change that and apply the actual solution that you have, select the edit button. Come over to the drag factor icon that's already highlighted, swipe across the defaulted 0.66 and enter the value that you've already determined. For help, you can always check the chart values under common drag values, or you can also use the calculate spin drag factor. This solution set will require to enter certain data points calculate the average, and then transfer that particular average over to the assigned window. You can see before it enters into the post-impact acceleration zone, it will actually enter into the drag factor field first. Again, I'm going to change back to the value solution that I've already determined. Doing that, I'm going to hit OK, and that number has been changed. I'm going to repeat that for vehicle 2. Edit, locate drag factor, swipe across the default number, and enter the already calculated number. Hit OK, and that number should transfer. If you have multiple surfaces during post-impact travel, you can always add a surface by clicking on the Add button. As soon as you click add, you can see that the default number comes back for the new field. What also pops into play is as I zoom in here, is a bright pink or purple grip that falls on the post travel path. This grip is actually the assigned value of where that transition from the current surface to the new surface begins and ends left click on that grip and actually slide that grip down that travel path to where that transition takes place. In this case, it is one surface. This is just for an example. Once you place that pink grip, it has now been assigned that proper distance for the first, 0.31, and then the second, the new assigned surface value. Keep in mind, after you enter the second value you must make those edits. Since we only have one surface in this particular scene I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Also inside the properties box we have a pre-impact friction value. This is located for the pre-impact travel. As you can see for vehicle one we have a series of skid marks leading into the impact. At this point right now, the zero, 0 assignment 
is letting this software know that there is no skid marks here. So to actually identify the fact there was heavy braking coming into the assigned values, we must swipe across that number and enter in what we determined to be the friction values for that braking. Once we do that, as soon as we enter that number, you can see the velocities have changed from the initial being 31.7 to the now 52.89. That's the speed entering and in, coming into the actual impact area. The impact speed stays the same and we also have the post impact speed with the assigned delta V. If you have skid marks like we do for the second vehicle, just repeat that process by going to the pre-impact friction zone, swipe across the zero, and enter what you guys determine to be the actual values. Once you're happy with the values that you've determined, and it does check the report that you actually created before using the momentum tool, you can now click out of this field and go up to the report feature icon at the top menu bar. Under the report field you can see that under re momentum report you have a report that's actually been created based on the value set that you've entered. This momentum report can go with your case file if need be. It's a five page report first window giving all the data solution sets entered, the second one giving you impact angles and post and, post and pre-impact angles with the PDOF angles, the third your math set solutions with workup, delta V solution, and then the fifth final page is the overall diagram that you have using the momentum tools values. This report can be printed off or saved as a PDF. To get out of this window, go up to the X button, X out of that, and now you're back to the report. Once you're finished with the actual momentum tool and you're happy with what you've got, you can turn off the momentum tool in your layer system. Again, by going to the layers, scrolling down, locating the layer that was actually created for you as soon as the momentum tool was activated and just simply turn off the, the visibility of that layer. That way it does not delete any of your math or any of your reports.